Welcome to Candidates Corner, Brockton Community Access's educational program about the candidates that are running for mayor of the city of Brockton, the most important office here in Brockton. I uh, have a pleasure of having Gene Bradley Duranencourt here with me. Gene? Mr. Chairman. Good to see you. Always good to see you. You well. explained that on stage the other day, <laughs> why you call me Mr. Chairman, because yeah. we served on the library board <laughs> together. We did. And uh, actually recruited you yes, for the library did. board. Yes, and Mayor Carpenter put yeah, you, you on you and then kind of started your political career because I got recruited yes. by a gentleman who I greatly respected, who I called Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. And he wanted someone that was like a third of his age on the board mm -hmm. to ultimately replace him. Yeah. Wonderful man, John Lingos, who the Lingos Auditorium is named for. I think about him all the time. He was a great man and his wife was a great lady. Yeah. We'd go to our meetings <laughs> and then she'd pour coffee for us. They had wow. more money put together and they still can write a check every year to the library. Interesting. So wow. very, very lucky. Wow. Library is important. Stuff. I know you learned yes. to speak English yes. at the Brockton Public Library yeah. with our own Melissa yes. over there. Yes. So, yes. And you've told that story. Yes, I um, to. Believe in Brockton. Yes. That's your theme. That's yes. your motto. Why is that important to you? Well, before I even start, uh, Mr. Chairman, let me say, uh, begin by saying thank you to your viewers. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that it is truly an honor to be at your presence in regard to sitting uh, in your living room at this moment watching this. My name is Jawad Lee Dunku, and some people call me the guy with the long name, um, just in case you forget my name. So it is always um, an honor to be at BCA. I just want to thank not just you, but the entire member of BCA for always doing whatever you guys can, whatever you think is possible to bring the best to the people. And I think this is one of the things that nobody can complain about in terms of the job that BC has been doing, not just yesterday, but in the past. So under your leadership, Mr. Chairman, I just want to thank you. And we got to the question, why do my slogan is believe in Brockton? Let's face it. Eight years ago when I came here, couldn't speak a word of English. Fortunately, the city of Brockton opened its arm for me. And by virtue of that, I was able to learn English at the library, you know, especially after facing one of the most devastated earthquake in Haiti. I came here not knowing anybody in regard to outside of my family, but the city of Brockton took a chance in me. And from that point on, that was it for me. Learned English there. I got my first job at Crystal's Restaurant. Did pretty good there for two and a half years, working as a bus boy, sometimes do some dishwasher. It was kind of like amazing. Working at Crystal sometimes, I said, it wasn't just a job, it was a family. JD, Maria, and all of them. And as you know, there was a moment the only way I could talk with Chris was in French because he knows a little French. Right. I couldn't speak English. So by virtue of that, I think the city of Brockton has changed my life drastically. And for that reason, I will never, ever forget Brockton or even give up on Brockton. And I think that most people don't believe that the city of Brockton is an amazing place. The city of Brockton is one of the greatest places on this planet, given the culture, the diversity, and of course, the stuff that we have in the city. We have a history that no city in Massachusetts has but people refuse to talk about them. So that's one of the reasons I want people to believe because when you don't believe in something, you have a tendency of not caring about it. But if you do believe in it, regardless what's going on, you will find something deep to stand up and fight for it. The city of Brockton is the city of champion. It is the place where people come and do great. And without this place, I wouldn't be able to be where I am. I'm not just here to one for me. As you know, in 2017, the people of Brockton elected me as the first Haitian American elected officials in the city. I say this because without a place like Brockton, I, w I probably would not have the opportunity. So with that being said, I think that believe in Brockton is one of the things that I can put out there. But I want everybody who lives in the city to know that they are part of something great. They are part of something amazing. It is our responsibility to continue building that foundation. Your father, some of you who are watching who are older than me, to know that when you move on, we will take it over and bring it to the next level. That's one of the reasons I'm running for mayor. That's the whole thing about me. <laughs> You're inspiring the next generation. You. And uh, you even have somebody even younger than you yes. this time running mm -hmm. for mayor, too. Yes, yes. I met you yes. when you were over at Massasoit Community Indeed. College. You did the graduation speaker. You the student. You were student trustee, yeah. and I knew you were a go. <laughs> you remember I, I, I knew I knew you were a go getter there. I wasn't <laughs> lucky enough to have you as a student. I wish I had. Okay, you. Wow. I teach speech. I yeah. teach TV and media. I would have been better if I had you. Well, I bet. you 
I think you do pretty but well. But I got to credit to my, you know, teachers. You're great teachers places. over there. It's a yeah. wonderful public institution. Yes. So um, you decided to get involved yes. right away in the fabric of the community yes. and, and, and do public service. Um, what do you look to the future mm -hmm. of Brockton and what is your either number one overarching goal that you want to accomplish as mayor of the city of Brockton? Mm -hmm. What could you do differently and bring to the table differently than your other opponents? This is a wonderful question and thank you so much for asking it. I mean, let's face it, in any community, especially those of us who believe in bringing people together, the number one thing that we got to understand as elected official is being able to work with the people, for the people, not against the people. And in order for you to do this, Mr. Chairman, you got to be able to understand where they are, where they want to go, and how you're going to take them there. So if you don't know where they are, if you don't know where they want to go, then how are you going to take them there? And with that being said, the city of Brockton is facing one of the most challenging moments as we speak in regard to government. Because some of the people who live in the city as we speak, they don't believe in the government anymore because they feel like the government is not paying attention to them. And that's the problem. As somebody who went to Massachusetts Community College, Suffolk University, as you know, government was my major and, of course, criminal justice. I know that it is important for us to build a sense of understanding, if not belonging, to let everybody know this is your place, this is your city. You have a solemn obligation not just to live here, but also to be part of it. Sometimes people say, well, you just come here. Well, that's a beauty. I just come here, but what I did, I adapt. I did my best to learn the language find my way within the system, not just to stay here, but also to get involved. My first political involvement outside of school was in turn for Linda Balzodi. You remember that at City Hall, in the mayor's office, I was there mentoring kids who couldn't even understand where I was coming from, given the fact that they were older than me. From that point, I moved on to work for Governor Patrick, work for Senator Brady, work for State Rep Brady. So I spent four years of my life so far working for the government on behalf of the people of Brockton to represent them day in and day out, even when I was going to school. So I feel like the people of Brockton need somebody who is willing not only to listen to them, but somebody who is willing to make an application, whatever they say, in terms of education, quality education for every single child in the city, public safety. In order for us to talk about public safety, we have to talk about trust confidence, being able to build that foundation, the residents can feel they are part of the system and law enforcement can be part of it. These are not the things that I'm saying. This is what moves community. This is what people are looking for because you can put one million dollars in the city. If nobody believes in the government, take my words for it, it's going to look like very chaotic. Not that far from the studio, downtown Brockton. It's dead. It's been dead for so long. I've met a lady recently. She lives in Ward 5. She told me that she will never come downtown Brockton because she's scared. She's 85 years old. How could you possibly live in a community where somebody who's 85 is unwilling to come downtown? For me, I think it is a disgrace. I think I have an obligation not only to represent them, but to represent them accordingly. And that's one of the reasons I said, in order for us to move on, you need somebody who is transparent. You need somebody who believes in a sense of inclusivity. You need somebody who is a change-oriented person. What it means is that someone who is willing to learn and also apply and bring new ideas on board so everybody can be part of it. I don't care where you're from, what you believe in, who you love. As long as you live in the city, you are part of the Brockton family. We are one community and we have to stick like that. I don't care where you, I, I truly believe that. I don't care where you come from, what you believe in, or who you love. But as long as you live here, I want you to understand that you are part of the Brockton family and you are welcome here. And I think we have a solemn obligation to let everybody know that you are part of our beautiful Brockton family. That's what I will focus on. That's what I will do when I become the next mayor of Brockton. Talked about trust, confidence, transparency, yes. and fear. Yes. You and Councillor at large Rodriguez, who's now Mayor Rodriguez. Yes, I voted for him. Introduced the... What's Brockton the, United Brockton United Ordinance. Ordinance. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, when you speak about fear, mm -hmm. different people have talked about that ordinance yeah. in different ways. They call it different names. It's right. Sanctuary City. Yeah. There are Which actually signs up <laughs> that say that. Unfortunately, so, yeah. talk about your reasoning behind it mm -hmm. and 
what you think its defeat mm -hmm. meant mm -hmm. and maybe what could be done differently? This is, this is one of the most important questions that I think you're asking so far in regard to the outcome of Brockton in terms of like where do I want to see Brockton in the next five years, 10 years, and even 20 years. And we got to the Brockton United Ordinance. If you recall in, 2000, in 2013, when the former administration first won, he supported something like that. And at that time, it called the Choice Act. I wasn't in like the official at the time. I was just in school. In 2015, he supported it. In 2017, he supported it. He mean the former mayor. I mean, the late mayor, I should say. Unfortunately, as you know, in 2019, Council Moses Rodriguez, who's now the mayor, filed an ordinance which called the Brockton United Ordinance in collaboration with the community. With that being said, the goal was, and still, to build trust and confidence and a sense of understanding among the residents, especially women who are facing domestic violence, given the fact that people know that. When you are undocumented, you are very likely to get abused because your abuser can claim that, well, you cannot call 911 because if you call 911, you will be deported. Some people have been victim because of that. And as you know, we are living in a city where people feel uncomfortable, given the fact that there are so many things that are going on. Uncomfortable for a variety of reasons, whatever that reason might be. But as somebody who lives in the city, as somebody who's willing to raise a family in the city, as somebody who believes in the city, I believe that I have a solemn obligation to be part of it. So what I did, they reached out to me to co-sponsor that audience, which they want, they call it something that, which is natural, a sanctuary city. Jamal Lee Duenoko will never, ever support any act that has to do with sanctuary city. And although I don't believe that term is actually logical, given the history about it in terms of the definition, but this was not the case. But March 28, 2019, the late mayor called me out solely to build fear or maximize his vote, given the fact that, Mr. Chairman, they know Jawad Lee Duenon, who is very disciplined, and when I put my name on something, I go for it with all my heart. The only way to destabilize me and pushing people away from me was to tell them that I want to turn Brockton into a sanctuary city. It is a blatant lie. It is not true. People are just using that terminology to push people away from me. Their goal was to shut me down day one. At that point, if you recall, I wasn't even running for mayor yet. Moses Rodriguez, who's filed the ordinance, his name was never mentioned. Even now, they call me out. They build signs saying that this kid will turn Brockton into a sanctuary city. Let's face it. If we are talking about building a community, if we are talking about elevate the young people, if we are talking about helping the seniors, I think that I'm part of the story. Without Brockton, I wouldn't be able to be here. And day one, I proved my willingness, my commitment, my determination, not just to live in the city, but also to be part of it. So with that being said, I think so far, I've been doing everything that I could possibly do to do or to apply the law accordingly. I became a U.S. citizen because I want to. I was working for the state way before I was an American. So as somebody who worked for state rep and Senator Brady for four years, how could you possibly claim that I want to turn Brockton into a sanctuary city? I'm going to say this to your, to, your, to your listeners or to your viewers. It is not true. It is a blatant lie that was created, if not fabricated, solely to destabilize me, given the fact that I am running for me. There is nothing else they can say about me. And there is nothing else they can create it other than that. It was unfortunate because they know some of you, obviously, do not have the time to do their research. I mean, what is not the best way to actually come up with something like that? But these are the same people that tell you that they want to represent you. Mr. Chairman, if these people do not have the courage to tell you the truth, how could you possibly trust them to lead a city? Understand that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the courage to tell the voters exactly what your intentions are, how could people possibly trust you? Growing up as a child, my father always tell me one thing. You should always respect whomever you are talking to. But when that person is behaving in a way that makes you feel somewhat uncomfortable, you have to let them know. My sister Dina always says something, Mr. Chairman. So, you know, I love my sister so much. You know, she's my boss, as you know. She said, every situation is different. Always analyze, strategize before you draw a conclusion. 
In that sense, they want you to draw a conclusion without even knowing who I am. As we speak, as you know, two years ago, the former administration or the late mayor said that I was one of the greatest kids in the city. I was one of the kids that they have to watch, and hopefully that will bring a different view about Brockton. Two years later, I am not the greatest kid anymore because I want to bring change in the city. I want to end nepotism and also favoritism. So I'm glad you asked this question because so many people have been asking me the same question. It is not true. Jabadli Dunoku will never, ever do something like this to Brockton. And I want the folks to understand that it was capitalized, if not a tactic to destabilize my base, knowing that a lot of people will vote for me if I do one for me. And as we speak, I am running for me. Next Tuesday, you have an opportunity to pick the person that you want to head to the final election on November 5th. What I'm asking is to earn your vote. And I promise you that I will do everything that I could possibly do to act accordingly. That's what I will do when I become the next Mayor Brockton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's go back to the lady that you spoke to, 85 yes, years 85 old. 85 years old. Okay, who's afraid? Okay. Fear. I have worked in this downtown for 26 years. Wow. I have lived in this city for 58 years, 57, because I lived in, <laughs> in another city for one year. Yeah. And there have been incidents, not too far from where you live. Yes. There was a shooting on a Saturday morning, six bullet holes in a yes. car on Keene Street. Not that far from we, my house. Right from your house and not too far from my house. And then downtown here, yeah. there was a gentleman who uh, had mental health issues who almost killed somebody yeah. inside the cell yeah, phone store across here. the street, across the street, and then charged the officers in the process. What do you tell that woman, woman and all the other people in Brockton? You did study criminal justice, as I you did, pointed yes. out. How can we do better in Brockton to convince the people that live here not to be afraid to live here? Number one, this is a very good question, but let me explain to you how we're going to do it. One of the first things that we have to do is to create an environment where people are willing to share information. I don't know if it's Mass if it, it is Massachusetts, but there's a saying here, if you see something, say something, most people as we speak will not say anything. Right. And when you live in an environment like that where people are unwilling to share information, even if they know it, it becomes problematic. And as you know, as we speak, I am serving on a task force that was created by D.A. Cruz solely to build a base, if not a strong foundation. Hopefully people from different community will have the courage to come and testify about certain things that they are seeing or hearing or probably think about will happen. So to go back to that Brockton United Ordinance, this was literally the gold to help them understand that it's okay to pick up the phone, call 911, somebody will listen to you, and you don't have to worry about he or she tell somebody else you are the person that called. The number one thing that we have to do, we have to build trust with a capital T across the board. Once you build trust, you got to be able to educate these people, not just the Brockton Public School educational system. We're talking about educating the entire population to let them know that they are part of the community. Because once you know you are part of the community, you will be able to understand that we as a community, we have to work together regardless what's going on. So Mr. Chairman, the first thing that I'm going to do when I become the next mayor, I'm going to call a community meeting with all leaders across the board. The number two, I'm going to launch a community policing task force that can actually reach out to different community and make them feel like they are part of it. Community policing must come to Brockton. And I promise you and you, I will bring it on board. And the third thing that we have to do is to encourage people to be part of the community and feel a sense of welcoming and also believe in the city and understand that the guy at City Hall, the mayor, is somebody who is working for them, with them, not against them. And this is somebody they can call at any given time, report what's going on. What people got to understand about being the mayor is that the number one job of the mayor is to protect the people, protection of the people. The number two is to bring business, job creation. 
The number three is to bring a sense of satisfaction among everybody. That's the mayor's job. Protect the people, bring jobs, and a sense of satisfaction. Well, although I studied political science, but I don't think you have to study a lot to understand that. My number one job will be to making sure that every single day that I work with and for the people and not against them. I've shown my commitment and also my determination within my own life. That same desire that I have, I will bring it to City Hall. And people can bet on that one. Here's one thing that people cannot bet on. I will not be part of a game. I will be on my own, especially when the decision is, a, is something that I believe will be good for the city. Nobody will have the capacity to influence my decision but the people. So when I, even as we speak, when I vote on the council, as you know, Mr. Chairman, I don't vote because someone says so. I vote because I know that that's what the people are looking for. I don't vote because somebody influenced me. I vote because I've done my research. You know me well, even when I was in school. I was part of almost every club in the school. I was part of the honors student, five Theta Kappa, and all of that. This is your school. But even at work, people that know me well, they will tell you that I have a lot of discipline. But sometimes when somebody feel like they have to tell you stuff and you refuse to listen to them, they have a tendency of saying that you don't want to work with them. But what people got to understand, I work for you. You are my boss. I cannot do my job without you giving me the opportunity. If you never have anybody work for you, I will work for you. And you can bet on that one. I want people to know, Mr. Chairman, that the new administration will be different. They can count on it. The new administration will believe in equity, transparency, and bring everybody on the board. Look at you. I think that you should be able not only to serve, but also to bring your knowledge on board. That's what people got to understand. I mean, just because, you know, we don't live at the same house or we don't live in the same neighborhood doesn't mean we're not talk about the issues. My job is to work for Brockton. I don't care who you are, who you love, what you believe in. As long as I am your mayor, whether you vote for me, I will work for you and you can call me at any given time. And as you know, after I got elected in 2017, I put my cell phone out there. Yep. I haven't changed this number. I still have it. Well, and, and I'm sure you'll certainly get a chance to use it. I got to do a time check here just to make sure what we have for time because I want to make sure I give you the closing statement. Okay. You mentioned I have six minutes. So I want to talk about six education. Yes. I want to talk about education, education. <laughs> because it's one of your key parts yeah. of your campaign. Yes. And the public school education in Brockton is second to none. Yeah. It's under assault. It's under siege. Yeah. We've talked about filing lawsuits for educational equity. There's the Promise Act, all sorts of things. One of the most important roles of the mayor is to be chairman of the school committee. I will be the chairman. Okay, so I can call you Mr. Chair. But um, <laughs> basically, how important is that in, in, in your mind? Education, you said education, public safety, it's all woven together. Yes. We have about five minutes. Excellent. I mean, to go back on it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about education, and I think that without a piece of education, I probably wouldn't be able to be here, especially expressing myself. As you know, I speak five different languages, among them English. I probably wouldn't be able to speak to you. Education and also public safety. Whenever someone is moving to a community, like I stated at the debate, there are two things they put in consideration. Number one is education, the question they ask, well, I'm going to this neighborhood, or I'm going to this town or city. Is the educational system is good? If it's good, that's a check mark for them. The number two is, is it a safe place for me and my family? If it's good, they're gonna go there. Unfortunately, as we speak, we cannot say this about Brockton, Mr. Chairman. The only, the, only, the only way you will know that is talking to a teacher. When a teacher has to tell you that sometimes they use their own money to go to Walmart or certain other places to buy school accessories solely because they want their student to do well. When I, when, when I sit down with the police chief, the police chief said, well, we have an amazing police department, but unfortunately, we don't have enough resources, we don't have you know, certain things that we need, and the community is not willing or unwilling, but somewhat unable to understand their relationship with law enforcement. I think what I will do, I will be the voice of the voiceless. I will be the hope of the hopeless, and if I have to beg every single Brockton resident to come at the table to discuss the problem, find the solutions, challenge everything that in front of us, I will do it. That's my job. And the word of Abraham Lincoln is that 
If you have to beg, you have to beg on behalf of the people. So education, public safety, youth empowerment, very important. Seniors, homelessness, extremely important. Small business, we're vitalizing downtown Baltimore. As you know, I said, when I become the next mayor, I will change Main Street and turn it into two ways. We are a city, not a little town. We have to treat ourselves as a city. We gotta be able to find a way to engage our young people. The environment, we have 39 parks in the city. I sat down with Tim Carpenter, who is the park superintendent, and he explained to me the process. We gotta be able to create a different environment. DW Field Park, I would like the seniors or anybody else to go there for a walk. But we have to clean the place, we have to build new trails so people can actually go there. Mr. Chairman, we have an amazing city. The perception I was there, as you know, is bad. But I know the people within Brockton are resilient, determined, and willing to take a shot at anything that is positive. That's what I will do because I am part of the city of Champion. But in order for us to do this, we must join force together and believe in our ability, if not the power of us, to move this place forward. According to Albert Ashton, the definition of insanity is to repeat the same thing over and over again and expect different results. This selection is not about how long you've been here. It's all about what have you been doing here. This selection is not about who you love or who you know. It's all about serving the people of Brockton. This selection is all about bringing a sense of diversity, understanding the culture, if not bringing what I call a sense of inclusivity, bringing everybody on board and making sure that they have a voice. Because as we speak, there are so many people in the city, black or white, that feel like they have no voice. And the my administration, I want them to know that I will be their voice, but with discipline and respect, because we, as government, should treat government accordingly. That's what I will do when I become the next man. Talk directly to them. Forget that I'm here. Give me about 30 <laughs> seconds at the end to close it out. I got two minutes, so you get a minute 30. Excellent. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for taking the time to give me this an opportunity. Dear viewers, if not Brockton resident, my name is Jawadli Dunoku. You can call me the guy with the long last name. It has been my distinguished honor to serve you on the council. As we speak, I am mourning for me. I am mourning for me because I believe in you. I believe in the city of Brockton, and I believe now is the moment to change what has never changed before. And we got to building a foundation where all of us can feel comfortable. When I first came in this country, I could not speak a word of English. You give me a chance, you give me an opportunity to be part of something big. I was fortunate to learn English at the Brockton Public Library, work at Crystal's Restaurant, and of course at the State House, at the Mayor's Office, and a variety of other places because of Brockton. Now it is my moment to serve you, and I would like to serve you in the capacity of being your next mayor because I believe that we need a sense of inclusivity, we need a leader who believes in everybody, and we need someone that can unite us. Public safety has been an issue in Brockton for so long. The educational system is going downhill, youth empowerment, and so many other things. I am asking you for your vote September 17th for a better, stronger, greater Brockton than ever before. Please join me in this journey. Let's believe in Brockton together. Don't forget, vote for Shemadli Duen Onko or the guy with the long last name. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Always Chairman. a pleasure. <laughs> Biggest thing is Tuesday, September 17th, to show people we are the city of champions. Don't disappoint. Make sure you take your right and your privilege to vote. Let's not have 20%, 25%. Let's have 80%. Voter turnout, people complain. My motto is, if you don't vote, don't complain. Make sure you get out. There are great candidates running for office. You've heard from them. Check out our election results on Brockton Community Access on election night. And then once the primary is over, we'll get ready for the general election. Thanks for watching.